Hey ladies and gentlemen, this is Mrs. Beckman here and today we're going to be going over Unit 1 Learning Target 3. So we're going to be talking about solving multi-step equations. So what we did in the previous note sheet were basic solving equations. You really only had one step. So this note sheet you're going to actually have a couple of steps. So let's start by looking at the, the steps that we need to follow. So this is good if you get stuck to reference back your steps to figure out where you're at and then that'll help you figure out what you need to get to next. So first of all, let's take a look at step number one. So the first thing you're going to do is simplify each side of the equations. So if there's per distributing you have to do into a parenthesis or combining like terms or whatever it is, you want to make sure that either side is as simplified as it's going to get. Then for the next step, you're going to gather the variables to one side of the equation. So you're going to add or subtract variables to get them over to the other side. Okay. <clears throat> so then you want to make sure that all of your letters are combined on one side of the equation. Then you're going to add or subtract to cancel the constant. So remember from the previous note sheet that the constant is the thing that's just a number. So you're going to add or subtract to get that over to the other side. And then your final step is that you're going to multiply or divide the coefficient that's outside of the letter so that that letter is completely by itself. Remember when you're solving equations, your goal is always to get the letter completely by itself. So let's take a look at an example. So here we have 5x minus 1 is equal to 9. Well, step number one, simplify each side of the equation. Nothing can be combined on this side. Because as you can see, 5x has an x and 1 doesn't. So those two cannot be combined. So each side of the equation is completely simplified. Then it says gather the variables to one side of the equation. Well, they already are on one side of the equation. They're just on the left side of the equation. Next is to add or subtract to cancel the constant. Well, here I notice that I'm subtracting 1. So to get that 1 over to the other side, I need to add 1. So then I get that 5x is equal to 9 plus 1, which is 10. So remember that 5x is the same as 5 times x is equal to 10. So since we're multiplying both sides by 5, I need to divide both sides by 5 in order to be able to cancel that out. And then I end up getting that x is equal to 2. So that's my final answer for number 1. Now, let's take a look at number 2. So for number two, I need to complete step number one, which is to simplify each side of the equation. So on this side of the equation, I notice that I have 7w minus 3w. So I need to subtract those. 7 minus 3 is going to be 4w. Then I'm going to have minus 2 is equal to 14. So then I now have everything simplified on each side of the equation. And I notice that I only have a w on the left side of the equation. So that piece has been satisfied. Then I need to cancel the constant. Well, here I'm subtracting 2, so I can go ahead and add 2 to both sides. So I get that 4w is equal to 16. Well, 4w is the same as 4 times w. So since we're multiplying both of those, then the opposite of multiplying is dividing. So I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by 4. So then I get that w is equal to 4 because 16 divided by 4 is equal to 4. So that's my final answer for number 2. Now, let's take a look at number three. So, I notice that each side of the equation is fully simplified, but I have p's on both sides of the equation. So, I need to get them on the same side. I personally always like to keep my letters positive. So, I notice that 5p is going to be smaller than 13p. So, I'm going to bring the 5p over to the other side. Since it's a positive 5p, to get it over to the other side, I need to subtract 5p. So then I have 13p minus 5p. So you'll notice I'm only subtracting the 5p from the terms with p's because those are the only ones that can be combined together. Well, 13 minus 5 is going to give me 8p, and then I'm still going to have my minus 3, and that's going to be equal to 13. So since I have the minus 3, to get rid of that over to the other side, I'm going to add 3. So then I get 8p is equal to 13 plus 3, which is 16. Well, that 8 is being multiplied by the p, so to get rid of it, I need to do the opposite, which is to divide it. So 8 over 8 cancels out. 16 divided by 8 is 2. So then here, I get that p is equal to 2. So taking a look at number 4, I need to complete step number 1. I need to simplify each side of the equations, and I need to do so by distributing. So I notice that I have a 6 on the outside of this parenthesis. So I need to take that 6 and multiply it by everything in the parenthesis. So 6 times m is going to give me 6m. 6 times negative 2 is negative 12, and that's going to be equal to negative 6. 
So here I have a minus 12. To get that over to the other side, I'm going to add 12. So I have 6m is equal to negative 6 plus 12. And when I add those together, I get 6. So the 6 is being multiplied by the m. So to get it over to the other side, I need to do the opposite. So I need to divide by 6. So that cancels out, and I'm just left with m. And then 6 divided by 6, that's going to cancel out to 1. So 6 divided by 6 is not 0. When you divide something by itself, it's going to be 1. So then I get m equals 1 as my final answer for number 4. Now let's take a look at number 5. So I need to start by simplifying both sides. So I need to distribute that negative 4 in. Well, negative 4 times x is negative 4x. Negative 4 times 2 is going to be a negative 8. So I'm going to write that as minus 8. So I'm subtracting it. And that's going to be equal to x minus 18. So now I need to get my x's on the same side. So since this is a positive x, I am going to subtract x from both sides. So then I have this x minus x cancels out. Negative 4x minus x, well, that's going to get more negative. Remember, when you add two negative numbers, it gets more negative. So that's going to become negative 5x minus 8 is equal to a negative 18. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 8 to both sides. So then I get a negative 5x is equal to negative 18 plus 8, which is a negative 10. Then I'm going to divide both sides by a negative 5. Negative 10 divided by negative 5 is going to give me a positive 2. Remember, when you divide two negative numbers, that's going to become a positive. So x, equal to, x is equal to 2 is your final answer for number 5. Let's take a look at number 6. So we're going to start by distributing on this side. So over here, I have 11x plus 3. And then 4 times 2x is 8x. 4 times negative 3 is going to give me a negative 12. So I'm just going to write that as minus 12. So here I have a positive 8x, and I need to get it to be the same side as the 11x. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 8x from both sides. 11x minus 8x is going to give me 3x. So I get 3x plus 3 is equal to a negative 12. So then I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. I hate when it does that. Okay, because this is a positive 3. So to get over to the other side, I need to subtract 3. So here I get 3x, and then a negative 12 plus a negative 3 or minus 3, that's adding two negative numbers. So it's going to get more negative to give me a negative 15. Now this 3 is being multiplied by the x, so the opposite of multiplying is dividing. So I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by 3. So negative 15 divided by 3 is negative 5. So x equals negative 5 is your final answer for that one. Now, let's go ahead and let's take a look at the next one. So, we're going to look at some review. So this is some review of what we did on the previous note sheet. We're just going to take it just a step further. So, let's go ahead and let's take a look at this one. So, what we're going to do first is remember that 9 is equal to 1 fifth x is the same as x divided by 5. Well, the opposite of dividing is multiplying. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 5. And when I do that, I just get x on this side. And 9 times 5 is 45. So here, I get that x is equal to 45. So that's my final answer for number 7. So now let's take a look at number 8. So number 8, we have a fraction. So I have 9 is equal to, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this as 3x divided by 7. So basically what that becomes is 3 times x divided by 7. So I'm going to take, uh, take care of my division first. So I have this 7 here. So since it's being divided, I'm going to multiply both sides by 7. And when I do that, what I'm going to get is 7 times 9, which is 63. And then I have 3x left on this side. So the 3 is being multiplied by the x. So now I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by 3. So 63 divided by 3 is 21, and that's going to be equal to x. So x is equal to 21. So that's going to be my final answer for number 8. Now, let's take a look at proportions, okay? Because this is going to be a special way of solving equations that I would like to talk about today. So, proportions. When you're solving proportions, basically it's, what it's going to be are two ratios equal to each other. And a ratio is really just a fraction. So you're going to have two fractions that are set equal to each other. And it's just the fractions, nothing added or subtracted on the outside of the fraction.
So here's how you're going to solve those. So to start, you're going to do something that we like to call cross multiplication. So to cross multiply, you're going to multiply the top of one side times the bottom of the other, and the top of the other times the bottom of the original. Then what you're going to do is set those two cross products equal to each other. So now you have something on either side of the equation. And then from there, you're going to solve the resulting equation. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at a simple example. So for number 9, what we're going to do is cross multiply. So we're going to do 4 times x and 32 times 10. So 4 times x is going to be 4x and 32 times 10 is 320. So I took the 4 times the x, tops times the bottom, 32 times 10, top times the bottom. So now this 4 is being multiplied by the x, and the opposite of multiplying is dividing. So this is going to cancel out, so I just have x, and then 320 divided by 4 is 80. So that's my final answer for number 9. Now, let's take a look at number 10. So I'm going to cross multiply. So I'm going to take 10 times x, and that's going to give me 10x, and then I'm going to do 7 times 5, which is going to give me 35. So now that 10 is being multiplied by the x. So to solve it, I need to divide both sides by 10. So I get that 10 is equal to 35 over 10. Well, 35 and 10 are both divisible by 5. So I'm going to reduce that fraction to be 7 over 2. But remember, you can write your answers as decimals as well. So if you take 35 and divide it by 10, you end up getting 3.5. So you have an option here. You can write your answer as a reduced fraction or you can write it as a decimal. I'll accept either. So let's take a look at some a little bit more complicated examples of solving using proportions. So we're going to still do the same thing and we're going to cross multiply. So I'm going to take 4 times 2y minus 3 and then I'm going to take 5 times y. So when I take the 4 and I multiply it by this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the 4 on the outside of the parentheses. That reminds me that I'm going to have to distribute. And then 5 times y is 5y. So I'm going to take that 4 and distribute it in. So 4 times 2 is 8. 4 times negative 3 is going to give me um, a negative 12. And that's going to be equal to 5y. So what I notice is that 5y is over here by itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this 8y to be on the same side as the 5y. So since the 8 is positive, I need to subtract 8y from both sides. So I get a negative 12 is equal to a negative 3y. So that negative 3 is being multiplied by the y, so I'm going to divide both sides by a negative 3. So negative 12 divided by negative 3 is a positive 4, and that's going to be equal to my y. So all of that, those entire two fractions boil down to y equaling 4, so that's pretty cool. All right, so last one, we're going to take 3 times x plus 4 and 5 times x minus 4. So I have 3 on the outside, and then I'm going to do x plus 4. And then I have 5 on the outside, and I'm going to do x minus 4. So again, I write it on the outside, so I remember that I need to distribute. So I'm going to start by taking that 3 and distributing it in. So 3 times x is 3x. Three, 3 times 4 is going to give me 12. Then I'm going to distribute over here. 5 times x is 5x. Five, 5 times negative 4 is negative 20. So now I have my equation set up and I need to get my x's on the same side. Well 3x is smaller than 5x so I'm going to bring that 3x over to the other side. You could bring the 5x over but I'm going to bring the 3x over. So oops, so this is a positive 3x. So since it's positive I need to subtract 3x from both sides. So I get 12 is equal to 5 minus 3x which is 2x minus 20. So since it's minus 20 I'm going to add 20 to both sides. So 12 plus 20 is going to give me 32, and that's going to be equal to 2x. Well, the 2 is being multiplied by the x, so I'm going to divide both sides by 2, and so 32 divided by 2 is going to give me 16. So then for my final answer, I get that x is equal to 16. So that concludes your note video for today. Please let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for listening.